for now, enjoy the first episode. Okay, <laughs> so Mr. John Ninos, <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Thanks uh, for being here. Yeah, it's so good to be here. Uh, let me address the elephant in the room right away. Is Miniac going to divorce you because you are on my content? <laughs> uh, uh, legal separation, I think, is what the order he served me with. I see, I see. For today. So he knows, right? <laughs> yes, he knows. <laughs> so the other thing is, why is your first name spelled like that without an H? Is it because you are from New Jersey and you play in a long hair rock and roll band? I bet you never, I bet you never get that, right? <laughs> that was a first for you. Oh, right. No, uh, I don't know. That's a thing in America where moms just want their kids mm. to be unique. And my actually, my full name is Jonathan, and it spelled different. Most Jonathans is yeah. A N at the end, and mine is O N. So I it's see. Double, double weird. Wrong. Gotcha. Thanks, mom. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Okay, mom. well, uh, could be worse names. For sure. There's always worse. Uh, so tell us something about you, and everything you want to tell us about yourself, a little introduction maybe. Yeah, who the heck am I? Am I and why am I on this five-star podcast as a nobody? I mean, it's easy to have like five <laughs> stars as something because it's like when you put yourself out there and then you get Google reviews and then there's one review by your mom or your friends and then it's five stars. <laughs> It's five stars. And then I go and find exactly. it and give you zero stars and put you right back. It can only go world. downhill from there. Um, yeah, that's that is a good point. So I am, uh, my name is John, and I'm from America. And I'm an old man oh, like you. Speak for yourself. Uh, <laughs> um, and I, I paint miniatures or fine, high quality plastic toys. Almost the exact wording, yeah. Almost. Yeah, I was trying to think of it this morning, and I was like, "Gosh, I don't want to be that guy that actually looks up the video again." <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be too try hard. I get it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I have been I haven't been painting very long, um, and uh, I kind of become an internet troll and stalk all the, the famous uh, painting personalities online, yeah, which is why I'm here today, to that. and which is why I. <laughs> Which is why I snuck my way into the Mini X videos mm. as well. I guess. Mm. Long story short, there. I see, there's a, a bit of a pattern there. Yeah, people assume that we've been friends for a long time, he and I, and that's not true at all. Like I met him like a year ago because I was just like, "Hey, you make videos about painting, and I live an hour away, so I'm gonna come yeah. over." Yeah, I was about. Was awkward. I was about to ask, uh, do you like live nearby, or what's the deal there? Yeah, I live about an hour away from him. It's so it's not that close. But yeah, close, close enough, enough to sneak into someone's videos if you uh, want to. If you really yeah. want to. I just show up. I, I know what day he shoots, so I just yeah. show up. So um, <clears throat> on that note, why the hell are you on my podcast? Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> did you? Why are you on your podcast? Why are we doing this? I mean, you could... I could deal? turn it off and you talk to yourself for an hour. That would be good too. <laughs> but on that note, I like to bring up your stuff because um, obviously it's going to segue into what our topic is today. So let me bring up your what you labeled as your first manager. And when right. I was looking through it, I decided that we are going to do this a bit differently. I was going to go through them, but uh, there's yeah, certain things that popped popped up that came into or that jumped at me that I wanted to address right away. I'm very I'm being very cryptic, but <laughs> hopefully you will realize. Yeah, yeah I don't understand so, what you're saying. Uh, this is your first miniature. Tell us about your first <laughs> miniature. Uh, yeah, so um, it was about a little over two years ago. I painted this. It was the first time I painted, um, and I. I never really thought myself to be a gamer or really had a lot of interest in the games. In fact, I knew of Warhammer years and years ago. Um, but, you know, when you're a kid, it's ex and it's an expensive hobby. And so I just never really 
resonated with me there. But from an artistic standpoint, I always thought that the small figures were super, super cool. Um, and then a, a friend of mine that I play Dungeons and Dragons with, he's like, oh, one of the local stores, they're having a painting competition for these miniatures for Warhammer Fantasy. It's now called Age of Sigmar. Um, and the game was relatively new. So I'm like, oh, cool, I'll go down there. And then the quality of the sculpts was light years different than what I remember the ugly little blocky orcs from 20 years ago. The funny thing is, I think they still make those. GW still makes those. Probably, kids, so. but that, that's a good um, point, yeah. And so I was like, oh my gosh. And uh, so as in all things I do, um, if I decide I want to do it, I get a little obsessive compulsive or a lot obsessive compulsive. So I immediately started to figure out how I could, how was I going to win that little local store competition? And so this was the first miniature I did, and um, yeah, so that's what I did, and I did win. Wow! Congratulations! What so, did you win? Uh, I won a, a a trophy, and I think like a fifty dollars well, gift already... card store, which I just spent on yeah. more paints. So yeah, I guess. jokes on me. But uh, that's already more than you win with a Golden Demon competition. So. <laughs> yeah touche okay well touché. you get a lot cooler trophies, i don't know some though. people hate them they're saying at this point they're just yeah, not guess, unique anymore they are just saying they're ugly and they don't want some anyway so there you go <laughs> so uh something i wanted to address right away before we jump into your uh, next creations is um and it's tying into our topic and maybe just I'm going to mention that uh, quickly and correct me if I formulated wrong, but we said how did getting into miniature painting change over the years? So what changed like um, when you started compared to when I started back uh, maybe 16 years ago? I think that was what we called our overarching topic, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of interesting things to gain from that difference in perspective that will help a lot of people yeah today hopefully. exactly that's the, in the plan behind the the educational goal for this <laughs> but yeah so um there's a couple of things when people start painting they often think it's a lot about um, talent and when i look at your first miniature for example let me just pick out two areas where the hammer is for example um, and mm -hmm. where does um, little arch segues into that long area uh, you put a really bright highlight mm -hmm. there um, and then obviously you have mm -hmm. you know where that highlight would go and then you have a lot of black into uh, in that non-metallic so you kind of were aware of maximizing contrast or at least you did it right does that make sense Mm -hmm. so yeah yeah I, I mean i didn't think about it in that way at the time but i in hindsight yeah, yeah so that was sense. my question did you know <laughs> about these things or was it more intuition than anything um i think a little bit of both so i and we'll get into more in this in a little bit but i do have uh some background in art not in okay. painting at all though so i don't have any 2d painting uh, background well very little very little I should say um, but just understanding objects and volumes um, and light I think was was something that it, it allowed me to get get that up to date quicker I guess yeah. but the actual technical aspect of making it look the way you wanted to this was a, a, a pretty big struggle and I screwed things up and probably did every piece on there two or three times before it. Yeah, I guess. Um, but I would say this is really a good start. You did understand, or at least intuitively uh, understand a lot of concepts and then just getting better at the technical aspects, I guess, was uh, what yeah. you were uh, trying to do after that. So um, yeah, um, that's just, a little bit of what I mean when I say you can learn everything um, <clears throat> because once you learn for example that you would probably put 
you know, white on an edge where you want to try to do non-metallic metal and then maximize your contrast. That's already going to put you light years ahead of someone else who is uh, not familiar with that concept. Um, yeah, that's just something I wanted to say at this point. <laughs> um, yep. Yeah, so uh, you sent me some more pictures and this is what you label as your second miniature. Yeah, so this was the second one. Again, uh, they, the store had, it was actually a, a couple of rounds of competition, and then this was, I think, the last or second to last round. And so it was right after the first one. Um, and I think I, I struggled with this one a bit because just trying to figure out what, how to make mm -hmm. a flesh tone um, and not look cheesy and super pink or super orange and but also trying to go with it to feel you know nergly or undead or whatever so um, yeah so a lot of yeah. compositional thoughts already there kind of or would you disagree yeah i i mean i think a big thing that I, that I tried to do to try to what I would call make up ground early on was that I would, and, and we'll talk about this in terms of what it was like to get started, was I used a ton, a ton of resources. So I would watch videos, I would read um, blogs and, and painting articles, although the final, the, the latter two didn't probably help me as much um, as I would have hoped. But um, I just spent hours just figuring out what people do and, and I spent a lot of hours looking at what I would consider like really well done miniatures by famous miniature painters and you know highly acclaimed pieces and just look at them and try to figure out the, the deconstruct it how do they make that look that mm -hmm. way um, and, and that that's something I continue to do today so I started that yes yeah, so not, not actually you, you did a lot of your own homework you did not just read up on blogs and videos watched videos but really sitting down and analyzing other people's work. I think that's a, that's a very good way to, to do. I think I did that a lot too. And we'll come to that um, because there wasn't actually that many resources available uh, back when I started. And I think that helped me a lot. That's quite interesting to, to hear. Did you want to add anything more to that? Um, uh, well, I, like I said, I haven't been painting for very long, but this guy was my first, uh, what I would call Nurgle or whatever, undead kind of mini. And so I kind of fell in love with that. Um, so a lot of the work I do now is of that kind of grotesque okay. style. Um, and I still actually don't think I even would consider what I, I don't really know if I have defined my style or I'm even close to there yet, but that's that's still a part of the journey. Yeah, I mean, you don't even have to define a style. It's like, in the end, I feel like that can put a lot of pressure on you if you say, um, I mean, obviously, if you're saying I'm not where I want to be yet, then that obviously leaves open a lot of room to improve and you should always try to improve. But if you're saying, okay, I, I want to okay. find my style or want to be somewhere where I can be called, that's a style. I think that can put a lot of pressure on you. Yeah, I found especially in this medium that it feels like if you're trying to do that, you're only going to restrict yourself. And the more you kind of just look at a piece and go with what feels or in your head seems to be exciting to you, um, instead of putting restrictions on of, oh, I only, these are the kinds of color palettes I use. This is the kind of the way that I make something look more gross. Or this is the style that I make metal look most realistic. If you have to f train track yourself in the process, then I think you're restricting the, the potential of what could be for your work long term. Yeah, but for sure. Don't take me for for as the expert. Yeah, I mean that's, that's what, what we're going to come to or get to. Um, at least that's what I want to get to. <laughs> but I'm going to save that okay. for after when we're done with the pictures. Um, so this is what you labeled as your first um, airbrush project. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, <clears throat> 
I had an well, actually, it's like I, I probably airbrushed one or two models before this, oh, just so priming them. I see. But here it was okay. Um, I I'm going to take a bunch of color through the airbrush and try to see what the difference in saturation and blending of colors in in how it affects the final piece knowing that a uh, majority of the work wasn't done with an airbrush what that was so it was kind of a, a hands-on experiment for me which is why it's awfully mm -hmm. bright no, and mean, colorful um it's a perfectly fine experiment to to do that mm. but i i think that i learned and i've heard you talk of this before too is the the way the transitions work with an airbrush in the saturation in the speckling even at a, a microscopic yeah. level um is something that you have to you're fighting against right and so i feel like an airbrush, and i'm not anywhere near what i would call good with an airbrush but i feel like i do i i make up three steps in terms of time and kind of getting the project mm -hmm. to the point you want it so I, I make up three steps there, and then I take two steps back to kind of undo the negative sides of airbrushing. So at the end of the day, I don't make up a ton of ground by doing it, at least in the worst yeah. so um, far. Yeah, I mean, the airbrush topic has come up a lot on my channels and my outlets. Um, and the only thing that I want to add is uh, you, can, you can do a lot of good stuff with airbrushes. Um, a lot of the time, yeah. like you said, and obviously you also did that here you kind of have to add another layer um, <clears throat> of paint in in some form to make it look um, how would you call it um comparable to only brush work as far as yeah the, right. the intensity goes or yeah some yeah intensity transitions are mm -hmm. the two things that I found that you have to work work back up um, and I mean and I'm working right now in my competition piece that I'm working on right now I airbrush that and I actually end up the hours that I've put in a lot of that I've had to kind of go back through and and uh, work that transitions up and work on the intensity because I, I could just tell that it was gonna laugh when you put it on the table next to other competition pieces that that vibrancy and that pop wasn't gonna be there so had to yeah. go through it but all I again. mean there's uh, you can see that in a lot of people's work that um, use just airbrushing for maybe the second step they, they apply maybe a white um, and a dark color to to have the contrast and then that white or the mm -hmm. airbrushing on top of the white is going to give them an intensity and that obviously works too but there's um, a lot of different steps involved so they what they do is they have the the brush work before the airbrushing so that just puts the um the brush work in front of the airbrushing right instead of what you are probably doing is doing the brushwork after and yeah it's just two two yeah. examples two sides of of the same coin i think but um yeah yeah i never thought of that yeah i mean i only just thought of that too so <laughs> that's why it was interesting <laughs> to hear your perspective and i was we need to patent that. Yeah, we Let's need a name. name. I mean, copy basis is obviously taken. Um. <laughs> uh, it's it's underbrush airbrushing. I got you. I got you. That's it. Underbrush yeah. airbrush. That works. That yeah. works. Boom. Market it. See, um, some Kickstarter. I'll be right back. I'll just I'll quickly make a few phone calls to my wife. <laughs> I've already been <laughs> cut out of all it's the products. It's just about who is first to the market, right? Mm -hmm. So this is. Uh -huh. That's a whole another interesting topic for another day. Is is the whole boom in the miniature painting market, the miniature painting world right now? It just feels like even in the two years that I've been painting, it's just like a lot of companies, a lot of products, a lot of stuff. Yeah. It's it's really interesting. I mean, anyway, no, I was about that, to say we are about... totally going to go down every rabbit hole that we can find, if that is fine for you. <laughs> Um, yeah. Yeah. So regarding, I mean, and this is not shameless plug, but I do my own miniature line because eventually I just decided that um, I want to do busts and I want to do create characters and also put them out on the market. And just in the last years, like you said, there's so many companies out there that people are overwhelmed um, 
right. with what is out there and right. the individual companies are making less and less revenue so that's interesting too mm-hmm. uh, it's going to be interesting how that is going to change the market sorry right with the market oversaturation where you have a finite uh kind of base of of people that would buy these products and the thing is is gw is at kind of an all-time high and still soaring in in people as uh, people assume that oh that means there's more people being added to uh kind of the potential customer base for their um artistic pieces which is what i would consider yours um found at mr lee's miniatures link in the description uh, it, but i don't i don't know if that <laughs> i don't know if that if that's accurate i don't know if because gw is is making money hand over fist that that means uh all the smaller miniature makers are gonna inherently get an extra piece of that pie yeah, i don't know i don't the think it is that, but... i'm pretty confident to say that uh, that's not the case because it's a different world um <clears throat> I mean, there's yeah. obviously a lot more people that just play the game um, and where painting is a bit of a nuisance or something you have to do. And the fraction of people that mm-hmm. even paint min- um, Games Workshop miniatures as, as a hobby just to paint them because painting is fun is already so small. And then making the jump from 28 millimeter sculpts or uh, f- figures to paint to that larger scale or yeah, even just 54 millimeter scales is, is so huge and people don't really make the connection that there is miniatures out there that are just there to be painted and to be enjoyed in that way i guess yeah yeah i and well i mean one benefit that guys like not from the popularity of the gw stuff is they keep putting out better and better looking sculpts that are Definitely, fun to paint yeah. so from that respect I, i'm not going to complain but you know when i look at it in what my introduction to the painting hobby was and that was from hype around the game talking about my first time i painted was from a competition and it was based off of the game they wanted people to learn yeah. paint and play the old gw yeah. triforce um and uh and so i just grabbed out of the paint and i do play the games a little bit but i'm telling you i won't i won't okay so this is your first uh vehicle uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, vehicle. Probably first and only. Oh, okay, that's uh, interesting. <laughs> uh, I have another one of these, and I've got some smaller stuff. But uh, working with large flat spaces, is you, interesting. you could pull a. Um, or working with what you, you know, planes, yeah. I guess, is interesting. You that could, was a new you thing. You could pull a uh, um, and just paint one thousand skulls on there, just little skulls. <laughs> 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 right then, exactly. then the planes don't matter all they are, are tiny little canvases yeah exactly i couldn't have put it better <laughs> okay so you but did you use airbrush uh an airbrush for that i did yes i used airbrush uh quite a bit for this one um and i also used uh mm-hmm. oils um quite a bit as well which i it was kind of my first foray into using oils in my work um, which we show, I think our final picture we're going to talk about here is my yeah. crystal brush piece from last year. And I used a fair amount of oils there. So it was kind of, I, I tried to build off of what I've learned in each one because uh, trying to speed up my process is a big, thing. it's like, okay, you know, it's a Trevarian like 17 years to learn this thing. How do I learn it in 17 uh-huh, days? I see, I see. <laughs> And it's not successful, but I, if I have that mindset and try to say, okay, how do I, how do I speed up my well, timeline? Is it? Um, that's what I kind of try. Why to would do you there. say it's not successful? I don't think. Well, it's not successful when you look at what took you seventeen years, what took me seventeen days. Yours looks better. Um. Hmm. I mean. <laughs> But I guess, you know, if I look at your 17 days or my seven days, then I guess I don't have probably, um, I don't know. Let's look up your I'm not, I'm not sure about miniature. that. I mean, no. my third miniature definitely didn't look as good as yours. I can say that. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, but that's partly also playing into our topic that uh, there's a lot more stuff out there to learn from. 
back then we were like, um, hmm. yeah, <laughs> I'm going to sit in my basement and read this article on the internet uh, that I just discovered two years ago. Um, yeah. And <laughs> Well, you got to wait for exactly. the computer to hook up and then connect to the dial-up. And then 45 minutes later, you get to Yeah, so uh, that's a lot of time that's wasted. And you're on your own and you're doing yep. this stuff on the miniature that you mm -hmm. don't actually know whether or not it makes sense. <laughs> but, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think at, at a certain... I mean, let's, let's go to your um, next picture. Whoa. So that is your crystal brush entry for last year. Is it? Okay. Yep. Yes, it is. This is it. Um, and uh, uh, full disclosure, this I actually had planned to enter the unit mm. category, which I believe the these have those as well. Um, so I had, uh, I guess, kit bashed or sculpted or, or made a unit of these plague marines and their leader um and typhus was going to be there as you know up on the the display piece kind of near the top and so it was five models and uh first time doing really like i'm going to sit down and do a competitive piece and i really want to try my try hard mode um i completely ran out of time so it turned from a unit category to a single Yeah, I, obviously I know that oh. feeling. Um, I was running out of time <laughs> on my on two of my Golden Demon entries for 2018. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So then, so then you just bring like exactly, 15 year old yeah. pieces and win. Why even bother hard. with doing something new? I was thinking <laughs> about doing the 10 year challenge and just put the the same picture. <laughs> like left and right and just add a golden demon statue to that picture on the right <laughs> yeah I know. Damn. but uh coming back to what you said earlier with um how yours is not as good as mine you know that was sort of the the vibe that i heard from that i totally disagree because um yeah. you certainly arrived at a stage where you know how to blend um how to make your transitions smooth and that's usually what i recommend people to learn that's mm. that's going to be your basis um, even if your transitions are not as good as yours or someone's transitions are not as good as yours here that's kind of the basic that you want to learn and on from that you can you can change everything you can develop your own style and I would say you totally found your style there um, at least for Nurgle uh, yeah so obviously you could if I pick out the the horns, that's one way to to tackle yeah. them. I would probably go and do a, a lot of line work to maybe show that, um, yeah, yeah, there is some texture there. What you opted for is a more natural horn look, and I would totally say you nailed it. If if someone told me that as a, a horn cut off of whatever animal would have a horn like that, and it's just glued onto the miniature, then yeah, I would totally believe that. And funny enough, I was planning on doing adding this, you know, the striations on the horn, but I, it was so hard for me to get that the transition on the blend from basically mm -hmm. white to black, which is probably more like ivory to like super dark, dark brown. Um, that I was finally like, I finally got it to where it looked okay. And I'm like, I'm gonna fuck this up by putting the yeah, lines on it. But, uh, I'm not doing it. <laughs> so sure, there sure. was fear there. There was fear. Um, and actually, the, when I met with the judges after uh, the award ceremony, um, the biggest thing that they told me, they kept me, I, I placed second with that, but the biggest thing that took me from, instead of getting first, was something I could have easily changed. And that was when I posed mm -hmm. him. Um, I had his arms standing up too high. And it took away from line of sight to his face. Yeah, I, mean, which, I can see that, yeah. And I'm like, I mean, part of it is the way that they took that picture, but it also rings true in, in person. I wanted a dramatic pose where his front arm is really holding up in the back. The back tentacle and arm is is weighed down mm -hmm. by the weight of the flail. So I wanted that 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 movement, that feeling of, of depth and weight, but I took away some really important sight lines. Now, my counter to that is, is instead I set up a, a sight line of what is my 
what I think is my favorite part of the piece, mm-hmm. and that is that breastplate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so basically, I had glued his arms in after having painted the body separate from the arms, and it was too high, and I was scared to snap them off. And so, um, I was told, just break it. It's just plastic. <laughs> It'll, yeah, I mean, the, <laughs> and I was yeah, like, oh. the, there's a few things to add to that. So first of all, I would like to put it out there that I mean, I don't know who the judges were back then. Probably were some big shots. Yes. Yes. It, yes. Um, no, I, don't worry. I can look it up. I, mean, I can't remember right now. The, the whole day was a blur. blur. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, let me mm-hmm. let me go from the start. So I w- just wanted to add, obviously, uh, the horns, even though n- not where you wanted them to be, still look good. No one knows that you were trying to do line work and it didn't work and you just left it at that. Or you were just scared to do it. And it, no one can say which one is better, in my opinion. Some people are going to like this better or that better. And in the end, it's going to be the same with judges. It's always personal yeah. preference in a way. I mean, you're trying to balance it out, obviously, by having a couple of judges. Um, but even then, some maybe they have all the same preference, and you know, it just ends up second due to whatever little factor that didn't happen. But but still, it's there's nothing right. bad about this model. Maybe okay, the composition. Um, but when we look at it from a technique level, and I would say composition and, and um, placing of the pose is definitely um, levels ahead of trying to get the technique right. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Sure. So, um, yep. yeah, I would just to close the circle there about what is better and is your stuff better or mine better. I think it's at this point one can clearly make out that you have a direction and knowledge about how to, to get the technical aspects right. And uh, yeah, that's that's the most important thing that I feel like someone should have. So just to add mm-hmm. to that. Yeah. And, and once you get to, like, well, the background on this is, is Miniac's like, hey, you know, let's go to Adepticon. I'm like, oh, okay. But he's like, you got to compete. I had never planned on it. And uh so I'm like, all right, I'll do something. And so I just wanted to have something in the case. Mm-hmm. That was my victory. And so with Crystal Brush, it's um, it's two rounds of judging. It's first is the online vote, a.k.a. the mm-hmm. popularity contest. Um, and then it goes to the judges once the final ten are selected from the online vote. And uh, knowing that that's how that worked, I specifically used the GW model. Oh, sneaky. Because... From the on, from the online vote section, people are gonna either want one of two things, and this is me conspiracy theory and this stuff. So who knows? They want one of two things. They want something they've never seen before, aka Michael Pasarski and uh, Contreras's horseman, uh, hmm. or yeah. or they want something yeah. that they know and love, but to be slightly different than just a, a nicely painted space. What, what makes it stand out they immediately recognize it but they recognize that it's a version of it they hadn't seen before mm-hmm. and it's super cool so so there's that and don't let me get into the uh, hidden sculpts that are just basically shown to the world as part of these big painting competitions <laughs> yeah the, made by a diff, somebody other than yeah the I was going to painting. say there's that's loaded and, uh, there's much to talk about here <laughs> and uh, actually I'm going to talk but. about that with Anthony in the next podcast so I don't want to go too deep into it ha. but yeah right, but well, you are fine. totally on the right track right. there at least you know in my opinion I'm gonna photo bomb your Thanks. next podcast appreciate it so let's see um, you have mm-hmm. uh, you sent us the back or sent me the back too so let's just quickly look into that um, anything so I tried to do a bit more texture on there. So he's got the cape thing. I just wanted to make it look, uh, well, the cape to look textured, but then those actually the Nurgle symbol of the circles to actually look like they are oh, from okay, yeah. flesh. Mm-hmm. They are torn off from flesh, so to add some texture there. So there's a little bit more texture uh, areas of interest in that regard in the back. Uh, 
angle as opposed to the I front. see, yeah. I mean, obviously, you're going to or you're going to try to do two things here. First of all, show that you can paint texture, um, so that's an additional layer to impress judges, right? And it's also mm -hmm. it can also be used to tell a story, like you said, uh, it's flesh, and you wanted to convey that. Um, yeah, and it's also obviously you can direct um, the uh, the viewer's eye towards some other things with texture um, that create maybe lines um, towards the face or whatever. Mm. Right. I see. Well, so I. <laughs> I see. So I no, but I already said a lot of what I wanted to say in regards to that, um, and that's why. He doesn't have a pink. He doesn't have a pink card piece like your noise marine. So I he doesn't have one. what a pink. A pink card oh, okay, piece. Okay. No, no. You idea. know what a card piece is? Uh, that's the that's the uh, part that goes oh, over the boy's mm, genitals. I see. I, I see. Yeah, yeah. You just painted one recently. You should know that on screen in the edit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but. So yeah, that's what I learned. That's what I need to do this year. More card pieces. More okay. pink card pieces. Mm. Win more gold. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, this is obviously just a a, a model <laughs> that I painted for the stream, and I, I was saying that. Um, <laughs> A lot lately because I'm thinking about what to do for the next Golden Demon, and I know that I cannot paint my next Golden Demon entry on stream. It just doesn't work because it uh, it puts down the quality so much, because you have to position the model um, for the camera, and then you're basically trying to move your arm around it, and it's so much easier if you can, um, yeah, that, use a different direction for both the model and the brush. And also, you're way more close yeah. up, and I have my magnifying glasses and all that. So, yeah, I'll dip. you you use you use like the, the no, thing that goes over um, your eyes. I'm not a nerd like that. Or yeah, just cheater like glasses. Oh, those. I have these since 15 years well, or longer. Those are super. Sexy. Yeah, you I should do wear those on So, but you know, I, I I that's something that I I struggle with too is um, if I were to do the painting on on camera how much worse it would be because <laughs> i struggle just to do it under no you know form of yeah. restrictions so i mean i can't imagine so you're basically you have to keep the model about 18 inches away yeah so what i do is i put my hands on the uh, on the table so so that i don't move it a mm -hmm. lot obviously off cam painting is always a thing if you just slightly move it then and i want to show everything i paint to uh, to the audience obviously there's people that don't care about that they just talk and sometimes they're like here painting here and then they're like there yeah. but, but my right goal is always to educate and i can't really educate if if what i'm, do I'm doing is not on screen um yeah and obviously yeah. there's a lot of the french not french the spanish um style of painting comes from that not only did they try to to be faster with their commissions you know the the whole copy bases and um, mm. uh, yeah, less smoothness and more line work and all that. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I mean, sure, it it conveys a message of yeah, you can you can be faster and it can still look good uh, and make a good impression. And there's other things than smoothness to to what makes a good miniature, but it also speeds up their process and it's also it can also be filmed way easier <clears throat> if you don't have to care about doing that gradient really smooth that's uh yeah totally a thing so so do you think that if that was a style that was used by yourself that you could find some con some middle ground where like well the first four of four steps would kind of go with that style and then when i got to the really smoothing uh, transitions and creating gradients that that could be done at the very yeah, end. Yeah, I'm trying to do that sometimes because the um, often I, I go very rough on the first layers and then it's like two or three layers more to just smooth it out. Um, and obviously I could film that last part too. And sometimes I do like for instructional mm -hmm. videos and for Patreon videos and all that. Um, obviously I can do it for an hour 
but I can't really do it for a hundred hours. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's just, makes sense. I don't know how we got here, but um, it made made sense. <laughs> Yeah, we're here now. But uh, let's go back to. Let's leave this rabbit hole again. And what did I note down? So you said maybe let's talk about that. You said you had a background in art, um, and I haven't really found out about that yet. So. And, oh. and maybe how okay. did it, how exactly yeah. did it help you with miniature painting? Um. All right, so when I was a kid growing up, my, I drew a lot. Uh, I wanted to be a comic book artist when I was a kid. Um, I collected comic books, but I didn't really care about the story. I just liked the pictures. And so I, I really enjoyed uh, artistic style from that perspective. Um, and uh, as I got older, um, I wanted to do something as a career as I got into like high school, but I also didn't want to be a broke artist. So I decided I was going to go to uh, school to become an architect. So I went to uh, College of Architecture at our local university um, and almost graduated with that until I, uh, I changed my major in my senior year because I realized what an architect actually did and what my day-to-day life would be and the, the aspects of art and design that I really enjoyed were such a minor piece of what the career would be and I didn't really like what the rest of it would be so I'm not an architect um, but I have always you know in, in different points in my life less sometimes not existent sometimes or flip side of the coin like today art is a very you know uh, strong part of my life so uh, so yeah I'd say I have a background in art but um, I don't have a strong background in painting um, but in taking a lot of art and architecture courses, I understand things like uh, color theory and uh, design, uh, space, um, understanding movement in the human body, I think is interesting. Uh, I would say the single thing from a background in art that has helped me most was the hand eye coordination and the manual dexterity. So me working on uh, fine line drawings uh, of comic book characters for 20 years, I didn't know how to use the brush correctly at first, but I figured it out, I think, pretty quickly in understanding things uh, like pressure and brush direction and understanding understanding details with stippling and things like that. Like that, I could get that Yeah, that would also like, that would explain why it. you found your technique pretty fast. Um, and it's actually something that I tell people it's um, that obviously some people are going to be better at hand eye coordination and you know wrist movement and whatever naturally um, but that is the uh, the number one thing mm-hmm. that I would work on or try to improve when and it's 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 funny you say that because that's not something you hear about very much at least in the circles of uh you know, professional miniature painters and, and articles yeah. and videos and, and blogs and Patreon content. That's not something that's, I mean, it's not that it's never talked about, but it's, I don't think people, most folks give it as much value or uh, importance. I mean, in the end, it's all, it comes down to personal preference, like everything. But I believe that, you know, you mentioned Michael Pisarski. Um, he does a lot of this line work. Um, and mm-hmm. if someone tries to to do that uh, to simulate the same thing, it's going to look totally different because of the way he moves his wrist and he does the the single mm-hmm. elements uh, of that work. He just has the the experience and knowledge how to put those down so that the final result looks the way he wants it to look. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously a lot of knowledge goes into that but the the basic thing is how he puts down those lines so uh, yeah that's that's where my understanding or why i have this theory of why hand eye coordination um plays a big a big role <clears throat> comes from so if i'm understanding this correctly you're saying that no matter what other 
whether it's technique or, or aspect of miniature painting that, that folks say is very valuable and important to learn, none of that matters if you if you can't execute. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say none because you can achieve a lot of, um, well, it, it always depends where are you looking at it from or who's looking at it, um, but you can create mm -hmm. something with a lot of contrast and it's going to look good no matter how, you know, crisp or non-crisp the uh, execution is of the blendings, for example. Um, so mm -hmm. it, I guess it's a, a bit of my own perspective of what I want to achieve with my pieces. Obviously that goes into that. Um, but for my style of painting, for what I find interesting in other people's work, uh, it comes down to that, yeah. I wouldn't, it's always hard to put something in absolutes. Yeah. Oh, but I like to do that. I want to put I want to put you in a corner here. And then you can, then yeah, exactly. The internet can rage at you later. Every, and I can say, oh, yeah. no, that Everyone was who disagrees mind. can just bash me. I see what you're <laughs> trying to do. Uh, well, I think you can look at it even from a basic perspective, right? Even if we're looking at it, someone that's like, look, I, I just want to have a good looking model to put on the table, right? So what's uh, for, I'm going to paint uh, 100 models from it. But what is one of the most commonly used techniques even from a tabletop standard i would i would argue that that would be having yeah and highlighting. that's uh, a fair thing to say because obviously and i'm going I, I thought about that um it's funny that you bring it up it's not scripted i thought it, about that because i just did a video for <laughs> for youtube that i'm going to upload in two weeks uh, from now about edge highlighting and I thought about why is edge highlighting so effective and a lot of it is in my opinion um, the way we perceive contrast um, because often you're putting um, dark like recesses next to that edge highlight and that is just going to increase the contrast mm -hmm. because of um, the way our eyes perceive darkness and light next to each other it increases the contrast even more and that's um, nothing you can measure with technical stuff um, but our eyes interpret that and increase the contrast area even more so um, yeah I mean and that's a whole nother rabbit hole getting into uh, uh, overdoing over contrasting making your your miniatures not yeah. realistic because you need to increase that contrast because the scale is totally. so small and i think you're right in line with that's that's a big thing that edge highlighting does and we've all edge highlighted and had that they like and it's like too big and you squish it down and it's just you're just like yeah. oh, crap so i mean edge highlighting is, is a prime example of those fine motor skills understanding pressure understanding angle understanding how you need to hold the miniature as opposed to how you need a whole brush working with odd angles working with getting inside small details and inside cracks and all that stuff that's all man yeah that's here and an experience yeah, but that, that, that ties the whole circle right like you said uh the um mm -hmm. the way you are actually applying those highlights and the psychological effect of why people always or not always but are really drawn to that effect so that's uh yeah that's interesting Mm -hmm. to uh, an interesting example to um, look at it from a holistic point of view I would say it's got to get that Duncan standard <laughs> yeah I mean oh no it, it I'm sorry if, if, they, if they don't sponsor you now because I make fun uh, of them I mean I tried that. to oh. I tried to get Max and I'm probably going to say his name wrong for Lege, the head judge of the Golden Demon on to sure my channel yeah. and do an interview about what's in what they are looking for in golden demons or in the golden demon competition and that took seven seven weeks to get a reply from his high ops so um yeah they are not really interested in working with so sponsorship <laughs> is out of the window well how can they tell you what they're looking for yeah if but they don't even? uh i wouldn't <laughs> say it like that <laughs> I, <laughs> I'll know it when I see it. Yeah, right? I mean, sure. in a nutshell, I would say they are looking for that crisp, clean execution, unless you put 
20 models or more on the table and you can't even make out <laughs> what's well, funny you're like crisp clean i'm like yeah that's exactly not what one. yeah so <laughs> that's the dichotomy of, that's of yeah mm. what judges are looking for and this is the inherent issue with oh where this is completely off topic but this is the inherent issue of of having a competition on something that's uh and that's sure i mean subjective it's not like you watch the olympics and you're like i feel like that person yeah. run faster than that guy no that's not subjective i mean it's a bit it's more complicated like that or than that with games workshop obviously they're trying to promote their stuff and uh, anything that screams warhammer is always going to win over some neatly executed piece that you know maybe doesn't sell as much i mean um yeah um right. so I was going to to say, yeah, every competition is subjective. Every painting competition is subjective because of the judges. Mm -hmm. But there's another added layer with Games Workshop, and you know, you have to know that going into the competition and have to accept it. <clears throat> I guess. So I want to take this back around on you, since we we talked about my background. Um, so when you were getting into painting, first of all, do you do you have any background in some any form of traditional art? outside of miniature painting and i know you've been painting for like yeah. uh, 55 years now so uh what what was it like when you got started and yeah, what got you in whole quarter of my life i've been painting so that makes me 200 years <laughs> old almost um Ugh. yeah vampires tell me good. about it um so <laughs> i'm i've been kind of the same in the regard that i have been always drawing I never really thought I was good at it or that I was able to, to pursue a career. And I think I even, I kind of stopped when I was 18 and when, when I discovered, well, actually before that, nah, I Girls. did discover those later. Um, <laughs> so I was always good at school and I was more interested in science than, than anything. So I dropped the um, drawing and all that um, soon when I yeah, realized I'm interested more in science than art, um, which turned out yeah, to be true for like 10 years. And then I, I kind of, well, no, that, what am I saying? For a couple of years. And then I came back to, to playing games, tabletop games. I didn't actually play tabletop games, but I started out playing some card game, I don't remember, and then I just saw someone um, pulling out Mage Knight pieces from blisters, so they came in boosters, mm -hmm. just like cards would come, and there were rares and uncommons and whatever, and you just had that rare that was see-through um, resin, and I was hooked on that, Yeah. and I started um, doing dry brushing on those miniatures because they look crap and I saw a semi semi endorsed website by WizKids that showed repaints. Um, so yeah, that was when I came back into, or that was the, the only, or the, yeah, I've, except maybe from, from scribbling now and then that was the, the first time I came into contact with paints, for example. So I don't really have a, uh -huh history in art however like i said um it's all it's really important in science and especially in the biology sciences to look at something and to to analyze what's going on there and i think that helped a lot with improving my style which comes full circle again mm -hmm. so that was uh long-winded and complicated i don't have any history in art but I have a history in looking at things, trying to analyze them and to yeah bring that on onto my miniatures, which ties in with what you said. You an were analyzing other people's paint jobs and trying to reproduce or whatever, or have you know draw the influence and bring that onto your miniatures too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing really spectacular to to <laughs> to tell there, other than that. I. I think it, I mean, the, the only part of it that it doesn't make sense to me is that I'm surprised that you don't have a more formal artistic background because you're a Yeah, sculptor. so that, I think that, that part. That came way later me. too. 
Um, I don't think I did. I only started. It was after I came back to Golden Demons. That was after 2013. So maybe 2014 when I started sculpting, but probably even later, maybe late 2014 that I started sculpting. Um, yeah, and that just was the, well, I didn't start sculpting. I, I did it. Okay. Uh, I started sculpting in 2007, but not really on a, a serious level, right? I was doodling and was playing with clay, but seriously, I started in 2014. Um, but it came way later than the painting, which is. So do you think, you think your background in science, uh, helped with from like an anatomy perspective when it comes to I mean, I was to, always, uh, sculpting? um, interested in aesthetics and I was, um, you know, interested in, in fitness and, and bodybuilding. I mean, wasn't really into it, but I was intrigued by how you can sculpt the body. So. I also I knew all the how you would call all the parts and that definitely helped definitely helped um, but in the mm -hmm. end even sculpting comes down to to being able to measure and to know um, the what do you call it um, let's say one to one or one to ten that is a how do you call that the yeah the ratios the ratios and how they relate to each other the, yeah totally analytical yep. um, approach again right and I would say even because I'm so analytical, I think I'm, my style is lacking the um, the extraordinary <laughs> a bit, if that makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, maybe well, that's because I don't have the you know, design background. It's probably because of that. Mm. I would say so. Well, well, there's always room to yeah, to, to but in the end step. it just tells you that you don't really need a background in art you can take the approach you can way different can take way different approaches to uh, creating something right i guess that's a mm -hmm. a good sentence to it, bring it i mean that's circle. a it's a very common statement i see online um whether it's in facebook groups or or discord chats or whatever is that well uh, i i've you know, I don't. I'm a terrible drawer. I was a terrible drawer when I was a kid. I, you know, I'm not. I'm not an artist. Blah 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 blah. So I'm just gonna wrap the can them mm -hmm. all blue and try to get the silver bits touched. And it's if if that's what you enjoy out of the hobby is not being a painter and just playing or just building your lists or just strategizing about how you're gonna play your sure. game. That's fine. And there's nothing wrong with that. But a lot of people don't look at themselves as artists, but if given a couple of, of opportunities to see they can do it, you can build a lot of positive momentum and really love it when you never thought you would at all. Um, I, I just caution people to not use that as a crutch to lean on. Is that I was never good at drawing when I was a kid, so I'm not going to be any good Yeah, at this. totally. Um... Uh, I don't have anything to add there. <laughs> it's uh, something I always, uh, always nah. preach, yeah, that um, you don't have to be someone that has been doing this for for years. You can just jump into it and you can even get good and better with different approaches to uh, to painting. I'm just mm -hmm. checking my cheat sheet here, my notes yeah. and things we still want to cover. Um, and I think the, at least one final important one is about resources and teaching and, and maybe the, the contradiction or, or differences between uh, in the last couple of years when I started as opposed to back when you started. Um, and kind of, so let's kind of talk through when you got started the painting, uh, how did that work? Did, how did, what resources did you have, the group of people that you painted with? Yeah, Did, I mean, well, how look at you carrying you? the podcast here. Thanks for that. Hmm. I know, right? Well, somebody's got to do it. Um, <laughs> so, <clears throat> the the single most, and it's probably kept an obvious here, but the single most thing that was different back then was the availability of resources to learn from. And mm. it basically was... I mean, it's going to get more interesting than that, I think, the conversation, but that's the... Uh, the 
the basic thing that obviously changed. Um, back then, it basically was step-by-step -step articles on the internet by individuals um, that were enthusiastic about creating that content and teaching and not so much about the best painters out there doing it, I would say. Um, so that's interesting because there was a lot of, and especially a lot of people that I learned from were American, um, were from the US, which is hmm. interesting because nowadays, um, yeah, it's mostly the European scene that seems to be influential. Um, but um, mm -hmm. the US people did have this clean style uh, that they tried to, to accomplish. Um, yeah, and that was the, the main thing. Uh, I'm trying to come up with names, but I don't. I mean, Jen Haley, and then I want to say Mike mm -hmm. McVeigh. I don't know if he's American. I might be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yep. that style was very prominent back then. Um, and those were people that were putting uh, stuff online. And then obviously you had the Games Workshop, um, White Dwarf and all that, right. which, yeah, I mean, for a lot of people today is probably the go-to resource still. Which really, I mean, which ties that in me. with what we said. A lot of people are just in that uh, Games Workshop bubble, right? So just, just sure, relatively, um, there's going to be a lot more people that try to learn from that than anything else. Um, but back then, it was a go-to thing. Uh, one thing that I just re remembered was that back then, confrontation started to be a thing, uh, and rack him. Oh, yeah. And that was a, a game changer as far as uh, they started to do texture on the stuff. Not only were they hugely into yeah. non-metallic metal and all that, but they tried to do texture, and that was a bit of a game changer. They still have... What's, what's funny, it's funny you bring them up, because when I was in college, or after shortly after college, there was a local game store, and I, my background is, from a game yeah. perspective, is Dungeons and & Dragons. And so when I'd see miniatures and stuff and going to the game stores, I'd look at them from that lens. But I remember when that game hit and just the quality uh, and just the crazy quality of the paint jobs I even bought some still have them the, the metal old metal rack hand miniatures because mm -hmm. I wanted to use them for D&D &D, but I, I'm like I maybe one day I'll, I'll figure yeah. out like I'll paint them and so maybe I will I mean the, I will. The, the very early rack hand figures were still really plain but it's the same with when Games Workshop started to do 3D um, modeling more than traditional sculpting. Th they were crap in the beginning mm -hmm. because they, they just said, hey, yeah, we need yeah. this by then and do whatever you can do and we're just going to put it out anyway. And uh, so it was a lot of people that right. just started to learn sculpting and find their uh, passion for sculpting at Rackham. And the, the very early stuff obviously looks like that, but they learned so quickly and they pushed the envelope with everything. It was the the French area of, not area, um, time time frame. Um, I don't know. <coughs> and it's too bad the game was shit. I don't know, was the game so shit? I mean, I didn't... That's, what I, that's all I heard. So the problem I that I had with played playing it. that game was the dice were were everything so you were rolling for damage and you had to roll two dice and the the lower one would decide the bracket um so you couldn't go mm -hmm. above a certain level of damage or even no damage at all um if you were hit if you were rolling a one even if you had one six then that would barely be any damage so you had to roll like three three or three six to to really do damage, and I just hated that um, because it added such a layer of randomness. Um, so, but I don't know if that makes the the game crap. So that's why I didn't like it ultimately, even though I played it for a long time. They used to have their own like magazine. Yeah, like and I was going to come too. to that uh, compared to the White Dwarf, they were really. They were not just saying, yeah, hide at this edge and, you know, pull on this wash. 
But they were they did have articles in that I think it was called Cry Havoc, that just made you yep. think out of the box. I mean, sure they had their consistent style and everything for the bases and all that, but even their bases were so much different. They tried to take a more realistic approach, and yeah, that that mm -hmm. stuck to me as a resource that really pushed us um, in our painting endeavors. But but yeah, mm. in, in general, just magazines were a lot uh, more prominent and important back then, which they are not really anymore. And yet, White Dwarf still comes out, and they still and have it paintings at all. <laughs> no, it has. Yeah, but, I'm not, hey, not I mean, to judge here. Diversity, diversity in resources yeah. isn't a bad thing. I, I, it still boggles my mind, but it's, it's not a bad thing, I guess. Because there are plenty of people that they get that for the gaming resource. It's and different. That's kind of their yeah, way all to that's consume a different um, yeah. target audience too, most of the time. So. Yep. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm thinking yep. of what else. Um, one thing I don't know if you want to get into that. Um, right away because back then forums were a large thing that's already community though do you want to do you have yeah uh, I mean I think it's applicable because I think I mean I don't know I feel like the, the community probably from then was more val valuable I don't want to say more valuable but because of the lack of the robustness of yeah, resources, exactly. it, it, it was more yeah. of, a, of a value then, um, than now. Yeah, I don't know if that ties in, but today everyone has their own Facebook page and you do have groups um, where painters meet, but it feels like, okay, uh, it's a feed, right? There's something going on to the top and yeah. the other things are just pushed to the bottom and then they're forgotten. Uh, in a forum, you kind of had that structure right that was you know work in mm -hmm. progress and finished stuff and tutorials and you could go there and they were collected um, and you could come back to them and even if someone posts a good step-by-step -step tutorial on, on a Facebook group you have to scroll for ages unless you and I don't do that uh, bookmark stuff I only I don't know bookmarked my first thing on <laughs> Facebook yeah. like a year ago or something like that <laughs> hmm yes yeah I, it, there's more per, there's yeah. more permanence now, so it's just a different day and age in, in instant gratification on how we consume everything, whether it be the our news or our food or how we shop. I mean, everything is much quicker and easier, and we demand it yeah. to be so. So that was a different time in how you approach things and how you consumed information. And I can't speak of it from a that painting perspective but I can speak of it from an online gaming perspective where back then um, having forums and building a community and having people that, yeah this is just a dude I know and he's a, a, a you know the warrior in our guild um, but I rely on him way more than I rely on uh, if I were to pop on I don't know World of Warcraft today I don't have to rely on anybody because it's all it's like, ah, oh, we'll just serve yeah. it to you. Here's your little raid group. Hit the queue. Hit the queue, and you'll just go through. <laughs> Hit the. I mean, yeah. To, to tie that back to anyway. painting, I think. Um, so if I take the example of of gaming, um, there's a best deck or a couple of tier one decks in Magic: The Gathering, for example, that you can just copy off the internet, mm -hmm. and that is the best thing to have. Um, so I wonder if that yep. also happens with miniature painting, where there's like a couple of people that are considered the best and everyone tries to paint like them, maybe. That could be a bit of a, a trap that we fall into nowadays, because some people are just so present. Hmm. Yeah, I just Ooh, that's a good that question on the fly. Look at me. <laughs> Oh well, yeah. I, it's probably one of two. It's one of two uh, groups. Number one would be obviously J GW Box Art Standards. Yeah, I guess. Right? So, yeah, we'd say we're a, a large majority of people that play the games what they view as yeah God tier mm -hmm. <laughs> is GW Box Art Standards, and then there's the more artsy side yeah. of our community, 
that they look at certain people, whether it's Kirill or Lan or Banshee or whatever, and you say, that's it. Yeah. It's got to look like that because that's the best. Yeah, interesting, yeah. You know? We need to, to talk about Oh, that's a that's a that's a whole nother that's a whole yeah, nother story for another say, day. To get think on. about that and talk about that when you come back on. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, you write down a note on that one. Um, so I, I'll I'll quickly talk on my uh, resources, sure, yeah. and then we can get onto the teaching before we go for seven hours on this podcast. Uh, one hour and twelve, <laughs> um, in, so it's not that. So, bad. oh, psh, <laughs> fine. So. When I decided that I was going to paint and I picked up that first miniature from the store and then I learned how to clean mold lines, whatever, um, I probably watched between 15 and 20 hours of YouTube videos on the actual was, process of sorry, painting just to interrupt. before I, e I, was before going, I even I, I thought you were saying you watched yeah. 20 hours of footage on how to clean mold lines. I was totally expecting that. <laughs> well, yeah, probably could. Hey, I'm not the one who spent an entire day uh, cleaning and, and gap filling my Necromunda game. So. Who did that? <laughs> Must be a weird <laughs> I guy. I don't know. He was cracking about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, Sorry, for uh, Yeah, so <laughs> I, I I spent 15, I spent probably, yeah, probably, I would guess 15, 20 hours on that. Uh, just trying to figure it out before I started painting. And obviously mm, I went to painting yeah. Buddha. That that fits right that into was that the time thing, frame too right? were they still around when you yeah. started as in a actively putting uh, out content they, I don't think they okay. had any new content I think it but it wasn't far before when I started that I think they had released the last one so I, I'd watched everything the, their Stormcast so he uh, Ben comments paints a Stormcast Eternal which is how I yeah, learned how to I, paint I, my Stormcast also. Eternal and I probably watched that entire series I watched that entire series probably five yeah. times at least. And so I was basically mm -hmm. painting my number for my first miniature. So you can look at it and be like, oh my God, but no, I was mm -hmm. I was just doing what Ben was doing. But I was learning the uh, techniques. I was learning how the application, I was learning about paint thickness and thinness. I was learning, I did loaded brush on that first miniature, which was uh, a dumb yeah, idea. Yeah, maybe if you have Figured. no um, <laughs> experience at all with how paint behaves, I would think that is a different technique yeah. to pick up but just um, to comment on that it's it's probably not a bad thing to try and emulate people um, first because you kind of realize okay where's my what can I do and what can I not do and what do I have to do to get there and then you can think of what what you can try to improve and you can still um, develop your own style off of that right because you will realize yeah. that oh that's not the way i want my finished thing to look what if i just change this little thing around i still do like loaded brush but i don't do it with white here for example but just t do it like with a um a color that it's not as bright as white and just change it around what happens right and it's not a bad thing to 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 do that yeah i think that that's a really strong point because if you look at other aspects like uh, sports, right? When you're a little kid and you mm -hmm. want to be like Michael Jordan, right? So you learned uh, how you'd shoot and how you do a layup and, you know, how you'd have your tongue out like Michael Jordan. And eventually, <laughs> you, you'd you come up with your, your own way. Yeah. But it's it's kind of that, that push point, that, that pushing point, that thing that makes it fun to you to be like somebody. Um, and then that crossroads happens where you kind of leave that trail behind yeah and you take what you've learned and then you kind of i guess as long path, as you don't so. lose the fun you know and that's a topic for me or right. a theme for me that always comes up just as long as you're having fun yeah. just do whatever if it's if you're trying to achieve exactly that box art that's fine you're going to totally learn something from that just don't you know be satisfied with it maybe try to switch something up um, and, and maybe experience the joy in that. If that is not joyful to you, you can always go back and just do um, what you enjoyed before and just copy the box art, right? Yeah. 
Uh, it is important to note that there's going to be a point in every miniature you paint where you're not going to be having fun, and yeah. just to don't stop. You'll yeah, get but back that, there eventually. That's also um, <laughs> why I usually paint like two or three things at once, because yeah, when you hit that, you just yeah. put it away and take whatever else you might be having fun with. But yeah, you definitely have a point there. Yeah. Right. Sometimes you. But don't yeah. let it go away for too long. Like if, you, if you let it sit in the shelf for too long. But that's it'll never also come fine, isn't it? it? I mean. Mm -hmm. that's like when i um when i'm painting stuff in sub assemblies i won't have each part of the sub assembly mm -hmm. to the same level of completion so if like the arms are separate from the head or separate from the whole body i won't even like clean the whole clean all the mold lines and everything of the head i'll just start painting the body and that way sometimes me going to a different mm -hmm. aspect of the hobby just for a change of pace oh, is fun yeah. so it's like oh well, I guess I can go back. I can prime the arms and I can, you know, gap fill the head because I'm frustrated with the way yeah. the body's looking. And so I feel like I'm still making progress on this mini without having to go through yeah. a frustrating I guess that's how day. people end up cleaning and, mold, and filling, gap filling their Necromunda gangs. <laughs> yeah. For an entire day. Uh, I, I, I jest because I do the same thing. But not for old. <laughs> that little burn um, there at the end. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'm sure you're. I'm sure you're. You're more minds. <laughs> Should we start with that again? Um, I mean, one thing that I right. have written down is that maybe ties into that um, is motivation and outside motivation, like painting groups that you can join, and how is that maybe different to to online communities do we want to maybe talk sure about that? yeah i think that's i think that connects here pretty good and we kind of get to a yeah. good natural stopping point there um so when i first started painting i had like three or four of my buddies that all started at the same time too and we did the competitions and we get together we go to the local gaming store and we paint but i quickly found that what i wanted out of painting and what they wanted out of painting were two different things um, I kind of it felt like it felt like deja vu for me is when I was a kid um, I learned to play guitar and my good friend we learned to play at the same time and like anything like I don't want to just learn it I want to be as best I can be at it so I, I you know I was a student and really 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 wanted to be a great guitar player and one day he got mad at me John I just want to be able like to play a song yeah. by a campfire mm -hmm. right exactly uh, um, and so I kind of felt that I hit that point here with painting too my friends just wanted to have mm -hmm. paint their D and D minis, or their armies for Warhammer, and so I felt there was a bit of guilt there. It's like, oh, I'm I'm, I'm going behind their backs and trying to get better when we didn't paint together. Um, so I don't know. Like, I think it's pretty tough if you have whether it's a, a single person or somebody, a group that are local to you that you can meet in person that are all kind of wanting the same kind of goals or close enough to where you can enjoy which, doing it together. Which could be a great thing. Just I don't painting it, for five hours, right? What to whatever standard? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we can chat while we're doing we'll it. Talk so we can be in the same room. Yep. Insult each other. Right. That and to me that's to me that's not about getting improving through that community because of the community. It's improving because you're keeping yourself held to accountability point of yeah. painting together. We paint together every Saturday for five hours. Like you're going to get better, not because they made you a better painter, yeah, but because the, they made you uh, paint. practicing. <laughs> and yeah, it just keeps you painting basically. Um, so I mean, if we compare that to to online groups, do you think um, that online groups can have the same effect? If you don't have any people close by that could kick your butt like that. Uh, I think you have to have a close enough relationship. I think if you just post stuff in a group and you ask for feedback, um, mm. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Like people are either gonna just tell you it looks good, and then it doesn't mean that they're yeah. dishonest or they're lying. They're either gonna tell you it looks good, 
or they're gonna say, oh, you should have worked on the belt a little bit more. And you're gonna be like, no, fuck you. Come on, belt was great. Who are you to tell me that? You're just some random. Mm, you're yeah. a random dude on the internet. Yeah. What's your credentials? I guess that's uh, that's so, a big thing nowadays. Um, because uh, a while back there was this whole um, rethinking or redesigning of some groups where they had policies um, that only allowed constructive feedback. Um, because there was a lot of really hard bashing of uh, yeah that, that looks crap and why didn't you do that and this so I, I think they, mm -hmm. these groups are still trying to find their uh, resourcefulness their yeah what they can do to help each other but I think yeah a lot of, of that just never really happened because like you said a lot of these groups end up just being just putting a like um, just putting in a like or just saying wow that looks good and when someone else someone is actually going there to look for for feedback um, I don't think these online groups can actually uh, provide that but and even I even question whether or not the it's it's going to keep you motivated to just look at other people's pictures I don't know so yeah I I, agree. I think that's the strongest thing is to not make it a, a, a personal kind of outlet for your own uh improvement but to gain inspiration and to look at that like like if i if if this somebody tells me you're the belt that you did look shit like i should mm -hmm. i feel like i should be able to see that and if i can't see that i need to do more work myself to know what a good belt looks like what does real leather look like and then i can come back and analyze and try to improve um, if I can't see it and someone tells me that that looks like crap and I think it looks awesome, well, then either I need to improve my eye or that's that's just yeah. where I'm at. That's where I'm going to be. I mean, yeah, like you and said, that's I okay mean, it's just some random guy in the internet in the end. And maybe uh, your local group, you can still be yeah. honest. Um, but yeah, you can be honest because you know each other and you know that it's not just because they had a bad day and they want to insult you on the internet. I don't know. I mean, I will say this though. I will say, if you have a, a, a community that's a little bit more tight knit, and it's not just anybody mm -hmm. from Facebook can join, uh, like you know, if you were a, a patron of Trevarian and you joined the Discord, and you can get uh, custom feedback and live interaction with Trevarian that himself, that would be pretty good. Uh, um, <laughs> that's different, right? Because then you're building more of a, a more uh, exclusive community and I don't want to, to use that word exclusive in a negative term but um, not just every Joe Schmo is going to come in here and say haha your shit is garbage yeah. and then leave because that's not the environment that you're in you can build up those relationships and get to know people and see their work and say wow okay then look at what he did you know uh, maybe he I will mean, be even, able even so, moving that away from the, it, the patron factor um, just discord I think um, changed the whole thing a bit because it feels a bit more like forums um yeah totally it does yeah I, I it's a nice so middle too, ground yeah. i'd say you just post pictures and you still have if it's a good discord everything's organized into um groups of or topics yeah totally yeah totally well thanks for the plug there <sighs> yeah <laughs> that'll cost you um <laughs> But yeah, I mean, <laughs> anything else you we would like to add to that? Ah, uh, I think there's I think there's more you can talk about on, on online and fees and what's missing. I don't know if we want to get into that today, or we see that shelve that, or see what folks uh, see what think, folks think um, themselves. Let's get some feedback from yeah. what people think. But I think there's if we're talking about whether it's resources or communities, what what is really what's the opportunity to grow right if it was a magic potion you know somebody else had already figured it out maybe it's not so easy but um there are yeah, still things yet I think the, the hardest part is to really find out what value something has for you or can have for you and i think that's the the biggest obstacle mm -hmm. with the the online resources that are available i think that's even the the more limiting factor uh, at this point to whether or not 
even though there's so much more available, but which is actually going to help you. But yeah, like you said, that's uh, probably topic for another time. <laughs> Uh, I'll definitely rewatch this <laughs> and, and have some notes, and then maybe we can do a round through too. Yeah. Uh, eventually, we will. That will yeah. be fun. So, um, yeah, I mean, do you want to yeah. maybe just do a last round of what are you currently working on and what can we see from you in the future? Yeah. If people do follow yeah. you so on Instagram, I, um... for example. A couple, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I have a couple people that follow me on Instagram. Uh, yeah, but you can check my, uh, you can check my work out there. I think yeah, in the doobly do down there, you can uh, have my Instagram. But let me grab what I'm working on. So uh, for Adepticon this year, uh, I'm working on my my piece for That's that. Not I don't to know. Show up. Well, I don't know. <laughs> but show up. But uh, trust yeah. me, this is a miniature. Uh, and it's a thing so uh, I'm working on him and I got a big old display base 100, 150 mils round display base it's all prime black trust it's me there's a actually big black hole, yeah. nice. for him a big black hole uh, a lot of artistic merit on, on, on that design choice um, and and I'm working on feathers right now too so this dude's got wings so uh, painting yeah. feathers is terrible. Don't ever do it. I agree. Some has wings, cut them off. But that's my advice. So that's it. Uh, that's my thing right now. I've got some ideas if I can get this done in time for a crystal brush piece as well. But it might be that I'm just doing the resin oh, piece. I see. Yeah. Catcher yeah. So you you're we'll kind see. of fortunate to have what that about in you the, uh, in the U.S. There all these category or sponsored categories. I want to say that uh, create some interesting environment. Too. Yeah. Um, but I, I just wanted to add that I really liked how that particular piece is turning out. <clears throat> some some interesting textures and, and the I, whole. Um, I don't know what exactly you wanted to do, but there's some stuff that's that's transforming into uh, this other stuff on its back, and that that really looked interesting. I I don't know why. I I, I don't know why. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, lava rock. Uh, I I was I was looking at pictures of volcanoes. And I don't know. I'm like, oh, rock that's melting into lava. Yeah, that's I mean, it doesn't kind of always have like, to make so. sense, but it looks cool for sure. Yeah, it's a big giant demon with a scythe. I mean, there's not a whole lot of real world like reference yeah. pictures I can find. <laughs> yeah, it still works. It's. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're going <laughs> to do well. And if you're not going to do well, then I'll have to come over and, yeah. Fuck them. Um, so, <laughs> do you not? Sorry. Yeah. Go on. No, I was just going to say, doing. Um, do you not have a Buddy and Paint account? Are you not planning on having that? I don't. I don't. Uh, I thought that's what I thought that that was my scapegoat. I could just do okay, Instagram yeah. and. Am I? Am I not up to? Am I up to date? Can you tell me in the wise words of Trevor I mean it's well, not like pay, um, wise better. words but it's still I mean I Instagram know. of course has a, a big audience that is also interested in miniature painting mm -hmm. but I I'd say I mean even just as a gallery to have I mean I guess you will have to decide whether or not it's it's better or worse or yeah at, at displaying yeah exactly at displaying your stuff it yeah maybe maybe Instagram is enough. I was just wondering if you had any reasons not to have it. I'm mean, it is a it is a bit of a more permanent portfolio yeah, kind of thing, isn't it? That's what I was thinking. It? And you're probably also only going to put your okay. finished stuff on there, not just uh, work in progress. Uh, what's the sure. idea? Work in progress. But yeah, um, if yeah, if you are going to I make guess. an account, it's probably just going to be Ninus John anyway, right? Slash Ninus John. Apparently. <laughs> Now it is. Now, no, someone's gonna freaking watch this and take You're the welcome. name and then blackmail me, make me spend money for it. Uh, I don't know that. I, I don't think that's a thing. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I know maybe five people are going to watch it. I mean, I've been creeping up on the ten people mark with some of my videos nowadays. So. Um, Whoa! Um, all right, yeah, what am I working on? Uh, I'm a, in a bit of a weird space at the moment. I'm just trying to get Patreon videos done and content done um, for YouTube. So I have all these kinds of um, 
models that I'm working on that I'm probably not going to finish or that will take a while to finish because, for example, <coughs> I do this Noise Marine every Monday on stream and it's going to take a while still. Um, yeah. Barely scratch, scratch the surface yeah. there because that's also Q&A, obviously. Um, <clears throat> right. And, that's something I can't I can't do very well because I did I've done a couple one maybe two yeah Twitch streams with Scott and I I mean I cannot mm. do both <laughs> very well at all and maybe it's maybe that's a learned kind yeah of learned I mean like I said too. it's obviously you can't really focus too much on it but I I kind of fi try to find a middle ground and still showing people enough um, so that they can learn something from it. <laughs> But it's also good to just have the conversation going because that's what's interesting to people to have a bit of a background noise right. too. <laughs> Otherwise, it gets boring too fast. Um, yeah, but I mean, yep. we, we mentioned that it, I cannot do any display stuff on on stream when I do that. Obviously, like you said, it's hard to focus. Uh, but yeah, I'm thinking about yeah. At the moment, I'm trying to find out what to paint for for Golden Demon, and obviously, I have these two entries that I didn't finish for last year. So I'm going to put, no, I haven't now? really done anything on them. <laughs> but that's that's obviously <laughs> something I have to do. Sorry. Yeah. Sure. And, and well, yeah, and then yeah, there you go. find something else, you, I mean, like for a third category. So, because obviously I have enough time. Right, just do yeah, every I did category. That was there, was there, whispers that they're taking away yeah the that was a bit of a wallet. bummer so i heard category. that they were getting rid of the necromana category and that's why i put everything i did for that away again because obviously i don't want to invest time into into that and mm. also if of course you could just enter the 40k um squad category but i don't want to compete against all these space marines too so yeah <laughs> that, that's why i said i'm in a bit of a weird spot at the moment but yeah, if any, anyone has yeah. any suggestions, uh, what could be a good 40k single entry, for example, I'm open to that. Right, um, we had that. So thanks for being on. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it again. It's fun. All right. Well, we'll do it again soon. In the meantime, uh, hopefully people will see what listen and watch and figure out what they liked and what they didn't like and maybe they'll say I'm voted off the island and I can't come back sure anyway so people don't yeah. ever talk to you ever. No, people like you I know that from Miniac stuff <laughs> <laughs> just don't know me oh quick quick story before okay. before we wrap this up so I told you when I first started painting I watched painting Buddha non-stop 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 last year when I went to Adepticon uh Scott was shooting uh, interviews yeah. for, with pro painters as part of the his kind of Adepticon video he does every year, and I got to meet Ben Commons. And if if you anybody out there ever run into me at a con or wherever online, I'll talk to anybody and and everybody. It's just who I am. Only time in my life I was completely speechless. Like I opened my mouth to like introduce myself, and it was just like, uh. wow. And it's so weird. It's, what a I nerd. was like, oh Jesus, I'm a, fan. I'm a nerdy fanboy, but like that was kind of my introduction into like exactly what we need on this channel: professional painting, more and, like, fanboying for Ben Comets. Right? No, I'm sure I'm the yeah. only one. Nobody oh, by the way, you can ever, totally so. um, recognize John next to Depticon because he's going to wear a Trevarian T-shirt. That's what I heard. That's right. So if anyone comes to Adepticon end of March in Chicago, uh, 2019, if you see me, say hi, uh, and I'll I'll be uh, giving out free coupons for uh, Trevarian merch. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. But yeah. Okay. Thanks again. See and like I said, it was fun, and I'm looking forward to the next one uh, that we are going to do together. Thanks. So All for right. uh, the care. next podcast, I will have Anthony from Pirate Monkey Painting on, and the topic will be like we already mentioned. Yeah, how do you, what can you do for competitions? How do the competitions in the US compare to Europe? And uh, yeah, that's going to be the overarching topic. And then, as with John, we're going to fall into every rabbit hole that we can find. 
yeah, so thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. And yeah, thanks again, John. Bye.